Kia ora, everyone. Hey, um, <laughs> can you do us a favor? Could you please make sure you subscribe to my other channel, Church on Sunday? I'll put a link in the comments. And uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys at church. Now, hi-ho, hi-ho. Let's get on with my show. Here's a warning. This one involves a DC and a car crash, and both of them are bad. So here's how it goes. Back in 2016 on Southwark Road, that's in Portsmouth, which is in the UK. Say about 11 at night, a bunch of mates in a DC were out driving around in a car, as you do when you're a kid. Now, these mates didn't know that one of them was a DC and really didn't give a toss about them or their safety or these boys' farmhouse and decided to start speeding and showing off, you know, acting like a pathetic little boy, trying to be cool when he lost control and slammed into trees. Really big ones. Emergency, can I help? I'm in the southern road driving and a car just left the road and crashed into the trees. OK. Are there any injuries at all that need an ambulance? I would have thought so. I don't know. It's all flying up. We're going to get someone along, OK? Evening. I never envisaged that the case would unfold in such a unusual way. It may well be on the B2177 towards Southwark Village. Yeah, we've just managed to locate it. So this is out of it, right? So the old Bill, as they call him over there in the UK, they roll on up and they see a guy sitting on top of the crashed vehicle. So they uh, pull him off and, and this is what happened. Gonna need another unit. Now, this guy actually identifies himself as being the driver of the vehicle. Danny, stand still, fella. Stand still. All right. Thank you for helping out. All right. It's not a problem, mate. Not, no. not a problem. We, thank you. All right. We just got to make sure you're okay, okay? Make sure everything's okay. I don't even know what happened. Where did we go? Where did we go wrong? I don't know, mate. I don't know. I haven't had a look yet. I can't even remember what I was talking about. How many were in the car with you, mate? Three. Three. Two. Two. Two others. You and two. What were their names? Now what's happened is Danny here, he suffered from a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, a quite a really bad concussion, and therefore answering simple questions is pretty much a no-go. Remember your friends' names? And the crazy thing is, is the cops, you'd expect, but they don't, don't pick up on it. Right, okay, we're going to arrest you. No, I'm not going to arrest you. No, no, no. Yeah, but... Just stay there and I can't hug you because I don't know what injuries you've got. Yeah, it's pretty out of it. I've dealt with people with TBIs before and they say some really weird shit. All right, buddy. All right. I really would have thought that the cop, especially the senior cop, would have figured that out. Still at my depot 5480. Please, please, you've got to make sure my friends are Danny, I've got everyone with them, mate. I've got everyone with them. As far as we're aware, the driver's saying that there were three people within the vehicle, including him. Including him. Yes. So rescue goes in and there's two occupants in the back seat of this little car. One of them is deceased and the other one is in a really, really bad way. So that is so bad. Fuck. Come come let's go and walk down to my car. So you don't see you, mate. Come on. Oh. Alright, they're looking after him. They got him out now, mate. They got him out now, so they'll look after him, won't they? Stand there for me. Can't see him, mate. They're looking after him. In the back seat. Both of them in the back seat. Both of them are in the back seat. Yeah. So I wonder why there was no one in the front. Hey, I'll be two, three on the last. Take four if you want to go get it. Just for the log, two males have been brought from the vehicle. One of them at this time is breathing. However, the third male is currently having CPR. Fuck! 
<laughs> so from here, Danny Lee goes to hospital and he gets all stretched up in one of those hospital beds and arrested by the cops. Under investigation at the moment, all right, uh, because you are suspected of driving whilst unfit to do so through drink or drugs. Do you consent to provide a specimen of blood which will be taken by a doctor? Yeah. So they test old Danny Lee and they find that he has absolutely nothing in his system, so he's straight as, and the doctors give him a clear bill of health. He's got no serious injuries. Danny Lee, unfortunately, this is quite serious and you're gonna have to listen to what I say, okay? I'm now arresting you on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving, okay? I'm also further arresting you on causing death whilst driving whilst uninsured and unlicensed. Things have gone a little bit wrong. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. It's also where we meet our DC. Because you see, when Danny Lee was at the crash site, he said that he remembered now that it wasn't him driving, it was his cousin. He says that this guy... So the cops rock around to DC's place and, uh, well, wake him up. And old DC, well actually young DC in this case, yeah, young DC doesn't have any injuries on him. Good news is that, that Zach, you're not one of the persons that's unconscious, so we've established that. And you were with Dad tonight after work, you went to the um, Harbour Lights. Harbour Lights, okay, brilliant. So now the cops, now their investigation has to try and figure out who's telling the truth and which one of these boys is a DC. Okay, your first name, is it Danny Lee as in one name? Yes. Okay, you've obviously been arrested last night on suspicion of causing death, death by dangerous, dangerous driving. driving. So with this interview, if you're the cop, who do you think's telling the truth? You're right. Palms are really sweaty. That is definitely not the best thing to say at the start of an interview. So just start, tell me all about yesterday and everything that happened. And the car was sunny. Asked Zach if he wanted to come in. Zach said, yeah, we drove to Porchester petrol station where then Zach stuck 30 quid of superannuated in. Then went from there up to Paul's Grove to pick Luke up. Okay. Uh, Luke then come out dressed as a gal. My little Luke. Tell, tell, are you okay? You want? To... Mm, I'm good. I'm good. Do you feel okay to carry on? Yes. Um, a little bit emotional, but you might have to deal with some tears or something. But yeah, well, we can live with that. You see, the old Bill, the old Bill, definitely believed that this guy, Danny Lee, was actually driving the car because of what DL said at the crash site. Plus, no cousin will ever do that to another cousin. Zach then jumped into the front because he paid for petrol and. He wanted to go, and he lost control, gone backwards, and from there I don't really remember much. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll see, there are yeah, a number footage. of times when you you admit to being a driver. Is yes, there? I don't remember none of that. Is that really that bad? Everyone's different, aren't they? Everyone deals with things differently. So we start with a car. What car is it? It's an Almira. Okay. Okay, any concerns with the steering at all? No. That steering is a dream. It was. <laughs> it's a dream. It was great. Fucking amazing for my first car. Now, something else that's not too good for old Danny here is that he loves his car, and everyone said he wouldn't let anyone else drive. And we're turning the recorders off. So that's Danny Lee's interview. So now the cops, the old Bill, they bring this guy, our DC, in for his interview. And here it is about here. If you can please state your name and date of birth. Zach Ross Harris from Bear Burbies, 11th of the 5th, 1994. Zach, you are here because you have been arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving, okay? There was a collision yesterday evening. Uh, and you have been named as the driver of the vehicle. You've got a bandage on your arm there, have you? I've got a fractured wrist. Oh. I've had it for a while. Obviously, yeah, hands, but they're all relatively dated, mark. aren't they? Yeah. What do you do for, what is it you do for living? I lay gas mains all day. Right. Digging now pay attention to how cordial DC is here compared to later. Uh, that's, that's still scrubbed over quite well, isn't it? Yeah. Now the thing that makes this DC so um, a pathetic is that it's far now that he's about to throw under that bus. Were you in a car last night with Danny Lee, Sonny, and Luke? No. 
if you've ever been in a cold with a threat. No. Liar, liar, pants on fire, <laughs> gold. Remember that saying when you were six? What were you drinking? What? A beer. What type of beer? Uh, Carlin. Any idea about how many? 13, 14. You can still walk? Maybe, maybe a bit more. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and then about 10 o'clock from the pub, we went to Forsco shops. Okay. Um, and what have you done at the shops? We got takeaway kebab. And what sort of times do you got back home? Between 10 to 11, to 5 to 11. And when you've got home, what have you done? Ate my food and went to sleep. And then at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got the police was knocking the door. Are you got any questions? Your <laughs> I think what's so shocking really, especially to me, is that most Farno members will do whatever they can within reason to help out their cousins with right, this I'm thing. Trying to the time is by my watch now. I need to get a digital watch or turn Mickey Mouse off. 5.48. So what happened here is that both cousins are arrested because they don't know the extent of DC's actions yet. So they treat him as though he had done it. So the old bull took their phones and their clothes and sent them in for analysis with the science guys. And now the investigation begins. So what they do is they check the alibi that DC has told them and they match up DC's story to what he did say, and they see that the majority of it seems to be quite true, except the timing's a bit off. But of course, old genius here, well, it's actually young genius, doesn't understand anything about text messages, and that delete doesn't mean deleted. And they get texts from DC genius and his cousin. You see, Danny Lee texts Genius to see if he wanted to put in a couple of quid in the car and go for a cruise. And Genius texts back. So now they know that perhaps DC is lying. Now young Einstein here is also a genius in the area of digital banking, petrol stations and a word called CCTV. So now they know that he's lying. So they can put him in the car, but they cannot put him in the driver's seat. So it all means nothing really if they can't place him in that driver's seat. So what the boys and girls of the Serious Crash Investigation Unit do is they get hold of the scientist guys. And what the scientist guys do is they run a test called Fiber Plastic Fusion. Now that forensic test is about testing the seat belts. And how that works is, when a crash occurs, that the speed and force of the body hitting the seat belt melts the clothing of the occupant in that seat, of which that belt is restraining. Now, that test doesn't always work, but in this case, it does. And that is how they get them. So, the output of those forensics are that the burn was on DC's clothing, and that there were hair strands with roots attached from his head on the seat belts. So, they definitely got him. He's lying. So they bring old genius, our Einstein, back in. Can you give me your full name, please? Zach Sorine from Ross Harris. As far as you're concerned, everything you told me last time was true. Yep. We seized quite a lot of mobile phones. Yep. Last time, I think we seized about six, mine. six or seven phones. Obviously, that phone's been analysed along with all the others. There is a text conversation between your phone and Danny Lee's phone, okay? It is around half past nine in the evening on that day. Danny's phone sends a message to your phone that says, fancy sticking a tenner in the car and coming out. Your phone then replies, yeah, let me let my phone charge up for a little bit first though, cuz. No. And then from Danny Lee's phone, look in Nan's parking space. Mm. Where does your nan live? Beyond my house. Explain that to me. Explain what? Well, that's clearly a conversation between you and Danny Lee. Well, I don't talk like that, so good one. Especially not to my cousin. I'm saying these messages are a load of fucking bollocks. But they're from your phone to Danny Lee's phone. It don't matter. And that crash has fuck all to do with me, okay. so... Do right. what you fucking want. Let's stick with the mobile phone. Right, are you saying that these text messages weren't sent by you? No. 
Sorry. It, no, you didn't send them? No, I didn't fucking send the messages. Okay. This is some CCTV from the BP petrol station. <laughs> is that you in the video? Yeah. But you told me you've never been in yeah. the car. So... Yeah. Okay, explain that first. He told me it was his dad's car. Right. Not his. So you had been in the car? Yeah. Okay. So tell me how this came about. How, to how did... I didn't trust him to use my bank card. Okay, let's, let's read on. So that is that they conversation, is. the text messages, is that... Did That's that not happen? me. That ain't me. Right. So the conversation about putting some money in the car wasn't you. But not you... through a text message, no. Okay, all right. So somehow you've arranged with Danny to put some money in the, some petrol in yeah. the car. Right, okay, carry on then. And then he took me home. Because I told him I don't want any part of it. Right, just help me out then. Why did you tell us that to start with? Because I didn't remember. Okay, why did you tell me that last time? The forensic scientist says, based on all that she knows and she's established from all the work that they've done, is that Danny Lee must have been the front seat passenger and that you must have been the driver at the time of the collision. What have you got to say about that? Nothing. Is that true? I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm not answering anymore. I can't. I feel sick. Okay. okay. Were you in the car at the time of the collision? I'm not saying anything. Were you the driver at the time I'm of the saying collision? Anything. Are you responsible for the death of I'm, Luke Fletcher? I'm not saying anything. In this well, this is what a pathetic DC who would sell out his own far now looks Dax, like. I appreciate your, I think it's fair to say, you're a bit fed up about being here um, and the fact that it's taken a long time. Is that fair to say? Fed up? Well, I'm just being polite. You're pissed off, aren't you? I can I'm see that. Fuck, I just want to smash some silly cunt's fucking head and not, not that, don't I? No, that's, that's exactly. Okay. Yep. And that is what a pathetic DC who would sell his own far now sounds like. The time is 17.33 and we're turning the reporters off. So this is what happened. And what I want to do is I want to show you the difference in people. In Aotearoa, where I'm from, we call that mana. The kind of mana that can still be there even in the face of such a bad thing to have happened. Now, mana's like the force. It's like everywhere and it is in everything. Now, mana can't be bought or stolen, though it can be lost or thrown away and it can only ever be given. And it's through this lens, the lens of mana, that we're going to look at these two cousins, Danny Lee and DC. Now, Danny Lee from the start put his hands up and had even said that he was driving at one stage and you could see and hear in his voice, both at the crash site and at the police interview, that feeling of hurt running alongside responsibility. It's a really shitty way of showing Danny Lee's mana because ultimately it does mean nothing because of what happened but it, what it does do is it shows you that Danny Lee has mana and that that can be worked upon and now now let's look at the other cousin through the lens of mana and to do that to look at DC and his mana we're going to listen to the third young man that was in that car because when he finally got out of the critical care unit from hospital here's what he had to say I can remember he was doing like off left to right with like the steering wheel basically just making the car go like that and it's not a complete idiot and it gets a bit hazy from there but from what I can remember the car spun out Before the crash, before the accident happened how was the driver at that point? Once again just silly and hectic he was just driving really fast from what I can remember Okay he was just, yeah, he was just showing he just kept putting his foot down and even when people tell him to slow down, he just wouldn't listen. Okay, and who, at that point, who was telling him to slow down? Me, Luke and Danny told him once or twice, he was just like, oh, I'll slow down a bit, Zach, he was like, come on, man. 
and that DC wasn't just a real piece of shit by doing something like driving recklessly while drunk in someone else's car with people in the back seat asking him to slow down and end up killing one of them but increases that level of shit to the standard needed to make what we call the channel a Einstein. You see, DC being the kind of person that would do that stuff, they have no mana. And then they place the blame for his actions on another so as not to be seen for who they really are. Just doing that would make him a bigger piece of. But of course, to top that off, he wasn't just doing it to a stranger or a friend. He was doing it to a Farnell member, a member of his own family. Jeez, mana. It is everything. Now, I know that there are some people, like a few, that may say, oh, sure you would. But if this happened to me, and I thank God it hasn't, but when faced with such a situation as this, and say being the parent of DC, and let's say DC told you the truth and told you what he did and what he had done to cover it up, the thing is, I know exactly what I'd do. Like, I know exactly what the fuck I would do, and that would be mana. Because it is the right thing to do. Because mana would be the right thing to do. Now, there's obviously people out there that wouldn't do that, and those people, they are exactly the type of people that we don't want as members of this channel. Because all the members of this channel and this global community of ours understand what it means to have mana, even if you haven't heard that name before. And those people are the types of people who make up the membership who are these guys called sub -I. and if you think like this then you should think about becoming a member of this channel be known for what you are by being who you are with us and join us anyway let's get back to the topic now to wrap this up here's a couple of things one of them is that you like me will feel that the punishment for what each of these cousins got really doesn't seem fair and it's one of those things you can say well I suppose when you think about it and what do I mean by that well that would be because of this DC for his charges of driving dangerously and recklessly and causing the death of another sentencing judge gave DC eight years and for Danny Lee for the charges he was on the sentencing judge gave him six years now first look to me it seemed kind of wrong, as I thought six years for what Danny Lee did seemed a bit disproportionate, especially if DC Neinstein here only got eight, especially because he wasn't driving and DC was, and DC lied to the cops and was a boy without mana. It just seemed steep. DC only got two more years over Danny Lee. But then what you have to do is that you have to put those six years into perspective of the crime itself and that crime's outcome. And it is that Danny Lee allowed DC to drive the car while knowing that DC was drunk when he hopped into that driver's seat. And if you think, well, you know, but Luke and the other guy, they didn't have to stay in the car, but they could have just gotten out. But you see, when you're with your mates, you trust in mana. You trust that your mate wouldn't put you in a situation where you could be killed. And when Denny Lee said, yeah, yeah, you can drive to his cousin, the boys in the back wouldn't have even thought twice. Now, the second thing, is a thought experience. So, get ready? <laughs> Clear your mind. Now, all I want you to do is think about what it would be like if you were the mum or dad of Danny Lee's and your brother or sister knew that their son drove and that they were okay for your son to go to prison but even worse some would say that they were okay with your son for ever feeling that he had killed his best mate how would you feel if you were Danny Lee's ma or pa it would be out of it and, and here's the thing, the majority, majority of people out there that watch this video wouldn't even be able to feel that as a concept for it would be something so far in a thought that your brother or sister and their kid would be fine with your son burning to death in a lie. 
So, the next time that you guys are around your brothers and sisters, go up to them and give them a big hug, probably a kiss too. And when they ask, what's that for? You tell them, it's because our whanau has mana. And when they ask you, mana, what's that? You can reply, everything, bro. Mana is everything. Now, finally, the last thing I'll do before I sign off on this episode and publish it for you guys is to introduce you to a new word in Kiwi language, in trio, and it's one of the most powerful when it comes to mana and justice. And I'll leave you with this example, and that when a person wrongs another, when a bad guy throws their mana away, if they had any in the first place, but they throw that mana away and that the only way in which that person can still be someone that holds mana, only way to that is through what we call in Aotearoa, Utu. And in this decision on what should be paid by the DC to the Thano of Luke, the young boy that died in the back seat because of the actions of these two, that in this case, and I'm sure that it would be in the case of probably many others, that Utu would be death. Sonny, I feel sorry for, like, he's not the same, he's never going to be the same. I felt bad towards Dan Lee in the beginning. I, I felt that he felt he really have that it. much of an issue with him if he's if he's holding his hands up to what he's done. But with Zach, so I, I, I really could not give a damn. He, he wasn't man enough to hold his hands up and admit what he's done. I blame Danny Lee as much as I blame Sack for Luke's death. In some ways, a little bit more. Had it not been for Danny Lee, Luke wouldn't have been in the car. It just goes through your head, why Luke? You know, why was it Luke that was killed and not the driver or... You know, the front seat passenger, why was it him? I know it's selfish, but it does go through your head. Luke was innocent, and it's, it's not fair. If uh, you are still here, then maybe there's a chance that you like what I do. So please have a think about supporting the channel, even for a little bit until we get back on that bloody YouTube algorithm. Anyway, <laughs> check out our Patreon and get early access to videos for as low as three bucks a month. Join the Safe Bars team. Okay, stay safe, everyone. And God bless to whichever God you believe in, because it really makes no difference to me.